Hi guys, let's look at some more of the material in the alkanes, cycloalkanes handout. <clears throat> of course, some warm up questions there. We've already looked at nomenclature, and that's a different video. We've been talking about that. I'm going to skip over to this page here, and let's look at what's called condensed formulas or condensed structures a little closer and we, we need to make sure we're able to deal with those. So let's do a little practice here. Make sure we know what we're talking about here. This here is, a, is considered a condensed formula or condensed structure. It's a little bit more than formula. It gives us structure here and enough structure that we can turn this into an actual complete Lewis structure and line bond structure. So we can we need to be able to understand the bonding that's going on here. Now first off, if we back this up to pure formula, how many carbons would there be here in the formula? Two methyl groups, that's two carbons, three, four. That would be C4. There's one oxygen there, where there's some H's and then there's an oxygen. One oxygen. How many H's? Well, it's saturated because there's no double bonds here. I can kind of tell that from looking at it. I won't say how. Once we get over here, we, we can see. Well, obviously, that's the, that's the answer. There's no double bonds. It's fully saturated. Uh, 2N plus 2 would be 10. There's 10 H's there. You can count them in if you'd like. But see, that's pure formula. There's a difference. This tells us some structural information. But how do we go from here to here? I'll do that for you. Now I've got two methyl groups here, two CH3s. They must be on this carbon. And so let's have a carbon with two CH3 groups. Well, what else is on this carbon? Well, it must be this H. H only makes one bond. And so the carbon needs one more bond to something else. It must be to the next atom over to this carbon. And that carbon, well that carbon's done. It's got four bonds. Those two carbons have four bonds. The H has one. Now we need to work on this carbon. It looks like it has two H's bonded to it. And then maybe the oxygen. And then the oxygen looks like it has an H, as it needs something. Now this carbon has four bonds, the oxygen has two bonds, and there must be two long pairs there. To give a, give a good structure, there's no charged atoms here, or it would be shown here. Looks like this is the structure. And if we turn that into line bond, we have a carbon with two methyls. I can just say carbon with two methyls. That's what that is. Here's that carbon with two methyls. Then to another carbon, has two H's, but we don't draw those, and then that's to an O, okay, an H. Now often for OH's we don't draw in the covalent bond. Uh, you could, and you need to know it's there, but often we sort of semi-condense that. That's, that's sufficient, now the lone pairs. And that is what I had here. Now I didn't show the lone pairs. Again, sometimes we don't. You got to know that they're there. And so we went from here, and there we go. There's our line bond uh, structure here. Now, what I would like for you to do is to work on these two yourself and see if you can put together structures. You may use some scratch paper so you don't use all, up all your writing space here, as I kind of did. And we'll talk about these likely in class. I think let's, that, uh, let's let that be the plan. Now, in particular, you're gonna, I'm asking you to pay attention to these sort of end groups. I call them functional group head groups. What's the bonding on the end here? You're going to have to kind of think about that a little bit. But let's try to learn something from each of these examples. So give those a try. Next on this page, let's look at classification of carbon, at carbon atoms by substitution. Now this is a lot like we did for amines and amides. 
A primary amine, the nitrogen is bonded to one carbon. A tertiary amine, the nitrogen is bonded to three carbons. We could do the same thing for carbons. If a carbon is bonded to three carbons, we can call that carbon tertiary. And indeed, right here is a tertiary carbon. That carbon is bonded to three other carbons, and we call it tertiary. This carbon is bonded to four other carbons, and we can call that quaternary, or some people say quad quaternary. Actually, a four superscript, four naught. This carbon is secondary because it's bonded to two other carbons. And then all the other carbons are primary. For example, this one here on the end, that carbon is bonded to one other, so this carbon is considered primary. As I mentioned, we saw this before with like secondary amines and a primary amide. There just wasn't a chance to, to point this out earlier, and so we're doing it now. Very commonly used terminology for carbons. We'll talk later about tertiary carbocations. That's a carbocation where the, the positively charged carbon is bonded to three other carbons. Now some books will tell you about how many H's. How many H's are on a tertiary carbon? You've got to be a little careful there. Uh, and so I didn't, I didn't tell you that way. Okay, we can also classify the CH's in a molecule. Now H's can only be bonded to one carbon. So we don't classify them all as primary H's. What we do is we classify them based on what type of carbon they're bonded to. If they're bonded to a primary carbon, the H's are called primary. If the H's are bonded to a tertiary carbon, they're called tertiary CH's, primary CH's, secondary CH's. How many are each of this compound here? Same compound as above. How many primary CH's in this molecule? By the way, before we go on, maybe we can name this molecule as some nomenclature practice. Well, we first have to know where are the primary carbons. Those were identified up here. Each primary carbon up here has three H's. So that's three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen. This fifteen primary CH's. How many secondary CH's? Well, let's look at the secondary carbons. There's only one secondary carbon and it has two H's. So there's two secondary CHs. Tertiary CHs, well, there's only one tertiary carbon, and that tertiary carbon has one H on it, so there's one tertiary CH. How many quaternary CHs? Well, there's no such thing, because a quaternary carbon can't have an H, because if that carbon's bonded to four other carbons, it cannot be bonded also to an H. No such thing. How many total H's? Well, we have them all. We classify them all. There's 18 total. Each H. Now, this is a hydrocarbon. There's no H's on, like, oxygen or nitrogen or sulfur, etc., um, so all these CH's have been classified. The formula would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. The formula is C8H18. You see it's saturated. 2N plus 2 is 18. We classified them all. Before we go on, would you like to name this compound? If you haven't done it, pause the video and name it. Okay, let's name this compound longest continuous chain. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. I see a five there. This is going to be the one end. That's going to be the five. It's going to be a pentane. 
Why is that the one end? Because then I'll have at the two position, two substituents. If I came this way, I would not have a substituent until I got to the one, two, three. The two position, we have two methyls, and at the three position, we have a methyl. Three methyls, we can call this trimethylpentane. That's all one word. Okay, all one word. Where are the methyls at? We have one at the two position, we have another at the two, and we have one at the three. Two, two, three, trimethylpentane. Looks good. One, two, three, four, five methyl groups. I think that looks good. Okay. Here at the bottom of this page shows common reactions of alkanes. Now actually alkanes don't do much chemistry. When we get to alkene chemistry and alkynes, we will see that those two can do much more chemistry because they have a pi bond. And compounds that have pi bonds or lone pairs have much more potential reactivity. Alkanes, plain alkanes, saturated alkanes with no pi bonds and, of course, no lone pairs. Actually, pretty limited reactivity. They, they tend to be fairly stable um, and unreactive. But you can burn them, and that would be considered combustion reaction. And we, we're well aware of this. We burn butane in, our, in like uh, some type of lighter. If you want to light your grill, a butane lighter. In the old days, uh, butane cigarette lighters used to be quite common. Uh, and with some oxygen that's in the air and a little spark, we can get a reaction that will produce heat. And that, that flame we know. All carbons are converted to CO2 through radical oxygenation and all H's are converted to water now this is not balanced you can balance that reaction if you like there's four carbons here and so we're going to produce four moles of CO2 etc the key thing is it does produce heat it tends to be exothermic and we can use that heat to cook hamburgers or to heat our homes Maybe if we're, we're heating our home with a natural gas, which contains maybe some methane or propane, this is butane, or maybe some higher hydrocarbons like octane we, we burn in our cars to produce energy, uh, some type of heat or some type of energy. Um, I show an example with a, uh, a regular non-cyclic hydrocarbon, and then I show one as a cyclic. Same thing, five carbons, you're going to produce five moles of CO2. We're not going to look at a mechanism for this reaction, okay? It's probably a radical reaction, and radical reactions are not well defined in most cases. In some cases, they are. And so we'll probably never discuss this reaction again uh, throughout the course. I may refer to it once in a while. Another reaction of alkanes is radical halogenation as opposed to radical oxygenation. Now radical halogenation tends to be more controlled. And in this example, we're just doing sort of one equivalent of bromine. Okay, up here, this is excess. You need enough oxygen to consume or oxidize every carbon. And if not, you're going to start forming carbon monoxide and, and have incomplete combustion. Down here, we can use just one equivalent, one molar equivalent of bromine, and we can just do one one radical reaction. 
So it's more defined and more useful, a more useful reaction. Now down here we use light energy. If you remember that from Gen Chem, Planck's constant times frequency equals energy. And note, what type of reaction is this? The H that's on the tertiary carbon here, if you want to draw it in, it's there. There is an H there. It is getting replaced. So this is a substitution reaction. Okay. And the H that's getting replaced actually teams up with one of the other bromines. And we can show that mechanistically and we produce HBr. Now this reaction we will look at near the end of the course. And on the syllabus, if you see here where it says radical reactions, okay, this is the reaction that we will look at at that point. Okay, so these are sort of the, mo the two most relevant reactions of alkanes, pretty limited. This one we, again, will see later. Now again, once we get to alkene chemistry for test two, there will be multiple reactions, many reaction types for alkenes. Okay. In this video, let's also look at one of the next pages, an overview of cycloalkanes. A closer look at them. Up top, I show some of the, the smaller, more, more common ones, including cyclopropane and cyclobutane. Okay, we saw these when we covered nomenclature of alkanes. Larger rings are possible, of course. Now, one thing we can note is that these two have ring strain. All right, also known as angle strain. And they are thus higher in energy. Now, ninth grade geometry tells us that this carbon-carbon bond angle here is 60 degrees. But this carbon also has two H's. That carbon is tetrahedral. It wants to have bond angles of 109.5. And so instead of those bond angles being 109.5 or something like that, we're squeezing it together. Okay, you got to, because the other two carbons have to bond as well. All right? But that causes strain in the molecule. And strain raises the potential energy of the molecule. Same thing for cyclobutane. This, from ninth grade geometry, that looks like a 90 degree bond angle. Now that's better than 60, but it still experiences some strain. When you get to these two, the bond angles, the CC bond angles are closer to 109.5. All right. Now, the ring strain or angle strain can be seen in the heats of formation for these two. If you remember from Gen Chem, heats of formation is the heat that is consumed or released whenever you form the compound theoretically from the elements. And so that would be if we take carbon plus hydrogen and make that compound.
Now you're going to have to balance that. We need three carbons and we need actually two, we need six, we need three moles of diatomic hydrogen. It looks like it's balanced now. I don't often balance reactions. I'm not real good at it. You guys have had Gen Chem more recently than me. But you can balance it if you'd like. Now, you don't just take carbon and hydrogen and, and combine them, let them react, and get cyclopropane. Um, you can't just do that. But we can theoretically and mathematically assess this theoretical reaction. And we can also come up with the thermodynamics of this other ways. Regardless of how you come up with these numbers, here they are. And these numbers tell us if you could take just carbon and hydrogen and react them and get cyclopropane, you would have to put in 12.7 kcals per mole. You would have to add that. That is, you have to supply energy to make this compound. But usually when you make covalent compounds from the elements, usually it's exothermic and you do not have to put energy in. And that is seen with the others. For example, these two. If you make this, if you take carbon plus hydrogen and you get that product, you are going to also produce energy. You will create energy. This is exothermic. <laughs> How much? Right here. Negative 29.5 kcal per mole. That's how exothermic it is. But this reaction here is endothermic. That is, you have to add energy to begin with. You have to put it in. How much do you have to put in? 12.7 kcal per mole. The plus indicating that you had to put the energy in. It's endothermic. The negative indicating that the energy is coming out. How much energy does this produce? It produces 29.5 kcal per mole. Okay. Well, this energy doesn't just disappear. Where did it go? It's now within the molecule. This molecule contains a high amount of potential energy compared to the elements. Why does it contain high amounts of potential energy? Ring strain. Those rings had to be forced together and they're, they're held together and it's like... Uh. Okay. In the end, let's try to sum this up. We can also note that larger rings are also not that great. Uh, look over here. Don't worry about that column. This is sort of the strain energy. This is strain energy. Okay. Bad. These are the best. Okay, six is best, but five is, five is okay. I'm telling you, relative. And these get bad again. Now you may say, well, the seven looks just like the five. Uh, there's other reasons I'm calling these bad, okay? But you can certainly see that as the ring gets bigger and bigger, it gets, it gets more strain. Why is that? Well, that's kind of the same reason, uh, or just the exact opposite reason. Bringing these, bringing these two close together, how do we want to do this?
we take these and bring them too close together, you know, like 60, that's bad. If this was 109.5, yay, good. But what if we do something like this and make it like 150? Well, now that's bad the other way. Okay, we've stretched it beyond 109.5. So that's why some of the larger rings are actually not uh, that stable, relatively. In the end, what are the two best size rings? Five and six. And I would know that. Um, later on in Organic 1 or Organic 2, we sometimes have a choice between forming like maybe a 5 or a 7. And you should know that thermodynamically a 5 is more favored than a 7. Or 6 versus an 8 maybe. Well, 6 is better than 8. Okay, let's now introduce disubstituted cyclohexanes. Uh, and of course we can have a monosubstituted. If you just take this and maybe put a methyl or maybe a chlorine or something, okay? This would be called chlorocyclohexane. You don't really need the one. By default, that's the one position, right? And there's not much else to talk about there. But if we put two chlorines on here, then there's a, we need to talk about that. Now, in my example, I show two methyl groups, not two chlorines. And we see that the two methyls can be placed adjacent to each other, and so that would be 1,2. We call that a 1,2 isomer. Or they could be placed like this at 1,2,3, a 1,3 relationship. We can call that the 1,3 isomer. Or we can place them like this, 1,2,3,4, the 1,4 isomer. Now each of these is a disubstituted cyclohexane, but each is a different molecule. Hopefully you see that. This is three different constitutional isomers. They all have the same formula of what? C8H1DUS, that'd be 16, 18, 16, okay. They all have the same formula, but different connectivity. Here the methyls are connected at the 1-2 position. Here they're connected at the 1-4 positions. Now, we also have stereochemistry here that's possible. Let's look at the 1-2 isomer. The two methyls could be both Ford. Because remember, these carbons are tetrahedral. Two in the plane, one forward, one back. What's going back on this carbon? And going back here? An undrawn H. The H is going back, the H is going back. The methyls are drawn forward. When, when the methyl groups have the same projection, it's called cis which means same side. But we can also have both of them going back. And that is also cis. So both of these are considered cis isomers of the 1,2 compound. Now these two are actually the same exact compound. Later on, we'll call it a meso compound. 
and we'll have to discuss that later. Right now the main important point is understanding that these are cis isomers. Because we can also have the trans isomers. This is where one of the methyls is projected forward, but the other methyl is projected back. And these are sort of uh, opposite or away from each other or across from each other. I think I would go with the term opposite, opposite sides. One is up and one is down. Or if, you hold, if it's written on the board, one is forward and one is back. But we can also have this version of trans. At least this structure. Is this a different compound? Over here, these ended up being the same compound. This is also trans because one is forward, one is back. Now I can tell you at this point that these two compounds are actually different. We will talk more about that during test two material. How to understand that these two are different where these two are the same. For now, you need to know that both of these are considered cis, regardless of if they're the same or not. That structure is cis, this structure is cis, and each of these is considered trans. Okay. Now, we're looking at cycloalkanes. I do give you a drug sheet that has examples of cycloalkanes. Um, they're seen pretty, they're pretty common in drugs. Uh, Cipro, okay, here's your name. Cipro has a cyclopropane and that's sort of where the, the name Cipro came from. Cyclopropyl. Now somebody may have said, hey, Cipropyl and then they decided to spell it with an I instead of a Y and it became Cipro. Uh, we also have a cyclopropyl here in this uh, statin drug. Cyclopropyl here and a cyclopentyl. Cyclohexane here. Uh, gabapentin, it's a GABA analog. Perhaps you've discussed GABA in a biology course, it's a neurotransmitter. Um, gamma amino butyric acid. One, two, three, four for butyric, alpha, beta, gamma. Okay, if you get rid of you get rid of the ring there. That's GABA. But if you try to give that as a drug, it, it just I don't believe it's absorbed well and it doesn't enter the brain. If you add the extra hydrocarbon on in form of this ring, it makes it more lipophilic and it can get in the brain. But because it still has sort of the GABA portion up here, it can still kind of act as if it's GABA. Um, all right. Uh, this drug here has a <clears throat> cyclohexane and these two groups are cis. The OH and we tertiary amine are cis. Uh, the tertiary amine 
and the and the methoxy substituted phenyl ring are this ring and that tertiary amine coming off are what? Are trans. By the way, here at the bottom, remember I told you this is 60 degree? Yeah, that, that's really the atomic bond angle, uh, the, the atom angle shown here. In real life, the orbitals are really not 60 degrees. They're more like 104. So actually, they're pretty closer to 109.5. Problem is, the sigma bonds between the two carbons, they're not interacting head to head. Because if they did, these two carbons would never be able to bond to this one carbon over here. So these need to be sort of bent towards that carbon, right? If this was the other carbon over here, uh, they need to be bent back towards it. Because if they were like this, and they just can't bond. So this has to come in. What really comes in is the orbitals. Um, instead of them overlapping good head to head, they only overlap sort of partially head to head. They're turned. And that's kind of illustrating here. <clears throat> but because they're turned, the bond is not as strong and thus it's higher in energy. It's a higher energy bond. And that's why we see the, the number over here. <clears throat> we have to put energy in. Um, so that's just a little extra information. Sometimes we don't have time and then we just say, hey, that looks like 60 degrees. But there's a difference between the uh, actual angle between the nuclei versus the angle between the orbitals. Okay. I'm going to end that here. We will talk more about cyclohexanes, particularly on the outline page, on the flip side of it. We do confirmations of cyclohexanes, and we look at boat and chair confirmations. And one thing we'll do is, for example, this is a, a chair confirmation, and we'll ask, is the chlorine and bromine cis or trans? Okay? And there'll be other questions to, to ask and answer there. But as we move ahead, of course, you need to know the information uh, on the previous pages such as like we discussed here. Okay, guys, I'm going to finish that video here. Um, we'll have other videos on confirmations of alkanes with the uh, Newman projections and the other videos will will focus more on uh, this outline page. <clears throat>